Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use the random module in Python. We're going to learn how to generate random integers, random integers between a range of from and to values, random floating point values, again, in a range of from and to values. We're going to be able to generate lists of uh, randomly generated values. We're also going to learn how to shuffle. Shuffle is part of the random module. So we're going to learn how to shuffle a list of items. We're going to be able to select a choice of items. We're going to be able to choose, let's say, a random letter out of a string, or a random number out of a list, or a random object out of a list of objects or tuple. So we're going to learn how to use all of these random functions today in this video. So here's a link to the official Python documentation for random number generator. You can find all the details right here. And also I'll put the uh, link to my GitHub site so you can download this Jupyter Notebook and run that code uh, at the link bo below in the comments. So first we're going to start with an import random. That's all we need to do to import the whole uh, random library. Import random, very simple. And the first function we're going to look at is randint. This gives you a random integer across a range of values. So it requires two arguments, a from and a to. And the two is inclusive, okay? So unlike the range function, randint is inclusive. So if you say zero to three, you get zero, one, two, or three. And here I put this inside of a for loop. So we can see uh, 25 executions, 25 iterations of this function here. Random.randint from zero to three. And uh, I also put in the print statement, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's a pretty cool way to stay on the same line at the end of your print statement. You just put end equals, uh, in this case, I inserted a space. I want to keep a space. But you can put uh, an empty pair of quotes there if you want. I like to see a space so that I can see a space between the numbers I'm printing. 25 numbers. So when we run this, we get a random string of 25 integers between 0 and 3. The next function we'll look at is rand range. So uh, the only really limitation that you might come across with rand int is that uh, you, you don't have a step function. So um, the step is always one. With range, this works just like the regular Python range function. So it goes from two minus one. So when I say zero to nine in this example here, it's actually zero to eight inclusive. The nine is not included in the range. And then a step of three. So here you'll want to use this step. It's an optional argument, but there's really no reason to use rand range if you're not using this step option here. So here the step in this example is three. So we'll get a random range integer, 25 iterations of this in the for loop, from zero to eight uh, with a step of three. So zero, three, or six, right? That doesn't include nine, does not include nine. So you can see what we got here. We got three, six, six, uh, basically zeros, three sixes, and nines. And uh, just before that, in case you want to see the, the function without the for loop, just simplified case here, it looks like this. Uh, print random dot rand range. And then you can put a range, just a, a two value in there. Between zero and 99 is what this will do. And that gives us a 25. So that's the rand range. Rand int and rand range are excellent for generating random integers. Next function we'll look at is choice. Choice is great for choosing one of a sequence of items. Now a sequence usually means a, a list, a tuple, or a string. Yeah, you can actually choose one letter out of a string. I'll show some examples for each one of these. So the first example, print random.choice. And we pass in a list of integers, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So these are odd integers. And it's just going to print, it's going to pick one of these and print it, right? So here we printed three. Uh, and then the second example, we have names. And this is a list of five names. And then we're going to use a for loop to randomly pick one of those four times. So we'll pick one choice from the names list and print it, and then we'll reiterate that four times. And you see what we got here, actually it randomly picked row B, uh, three out of those four times. But if we run it again, we'll get probably a different result. So uh, here's what we get in another run. So that's random.choice for picking from a list of integers, 
or a list of names. You can also pick a random character from a string. Here we have uh, just a string, a bunch of letters. And uh, with this print statement, this is a simple case here where it's just a simple print statement. You can run that. Oh, and it picked a hyphen, OK? There are two hyphens in there, so decent chance of picking a hyphen. That's what we got. And then in this one, we pick a, a variable called material, and we assign the string brocade to it. And we're going to do 10 iterations of randomly picking one character out of the word brocade. And again, I use the end equals uh, two spaces here, so to keep us on the same line. And it randomly prints one character out of the word brocade each iteration of this loop. So this is random.choice. That picks one item at random from some sequence. Now, if you want to pick more than one item, well, obviously, we can use a for loop um, and repeat that. Uh, however, there's also this function called choices, the plural of that, OK? So it basically does the same thing. Uh, it's going to return a list of items, right, which is um, randomly selected from the list of uh, or the sequence that you put in. You get to decide how many items are chosen. The, this choice here, k equals 15, that means it's going to do 15 selections from your list. And here the list is a list of numbers from 1 to 10. And I used a list comprehension to create that. In case you're not familiar with list comprehensions, go back and look at my video on list comprehensions. But this is going to give us n plus 1 for n in range 0 through 9, right? In other words, it's going to give us a list of 1 to 10 integers. And so we're going to assign to my picks this list of random choices, 15 picks from this list of numbers, right? So you see our list of 15 picks here that we print out. Um, that does include 10, up to 10. So anything 1 through 10, we randomly pick one uh, at a time 15 times. We don't need to use a for loop because we're using choices instead of choice. So we can just set k equals to 15, the number of times, we, number of items we want to pick, basically. And this keeps all the items in the list. It doesn't change our original list. If I want to put a print statement in here and print out uh, numbers, you'll see that numbers is not changed. Numbers stays the same, 1 through 10. So the next example is names. We have five names, and we're going to print, uh, we're going to randomly pick two of those names. Let's see, when we run this, we get Darby and Hampton. So two names it picks randomly from this list of five names. We just set k equal to 2. We can also add weights if we want. Uh, here we have a list of four integers, 1 through 4. And we just put in this uh, optional argument here of weights, which is a list. The length of this list needs to match the length of this list that we're passing in as, as the data, right? the things that we're going to choose. So we're going to choose the numbers 1 through 4 and the weights. We also need a list of four values, four integer values in this weights list, if we're going to use that as an argument. So we're going to choose um, 20 choices, k equals 20. And then we're going to print out our list of picks, which is going to be the 20 picks that we picked from this list. Now what you would expect here, look, the weights that I put in, 4, for the very first integer. And the very first item in the list is 1. So in other words, we're weighting 1 much heavier than we're weighting, let's see, the fourth item in the list is 1. It was weighted 1, and that's number 4. In other words, you're going to see a lot of smaller numbers, but very few of the larger numbers, right? Because that's how the weighting is in reverse order. Let me run this again. And you see a lot of 1s here and very few 4s. The, the output is heavily weighted towards 1s and 2s, right? Because that's what weights does. Weights allows you to prioritize some items in your list over others. So you can control the priority of some items in your list when you're picking. So it's not totally random in this case. You can use random.choices to generate random passwords. This is kind of two little functions that I wrote here. Uh, to generate passwords. The first one is just all lowercase characters, all lowercase characters. So A to Z. And 
I set up a list called picks and random.choices I'm going to choose one of these integers from A to Z. Why are they integers? Because the range function is going to iterate over ORD which gives us the numerical value or the integer value from the ASCII table for A and then this uh, ORD Z gives us the um, ASCII value for Z the numerical value for a Z in the ASCII table. We're going to iterate through those uh, randomly pick one eight times put them into a list called picks so now we've got this list of integers called picks if you want I can print this out let's let's do print picks and we'll run that so you can see what picks looks like it's a list of integers those are the the ASCII values from the list and now we set picks equals to uh, the character value or the um, basically we want to convert these back to characters so A to Z values. And then we're going to join those together into a string. The, the, the list that we get is picks. List of characters. We join those into a string and print that out. And we get here's what we get. An eight character string of randomly chosen characters from A to Z. So it's a simple little four line. Actually less. You can take out some of these print statements. It's two lines of code. Simple way to generate random passwords. But this one's not very complex because it's only using lowercase characters. So if you want to use um, uh, alpha and numeric, I imported the string class in this function. We import the string class and then we get this big long string of all the characters from A to Z lowercase, A to Z uppercase, and all the digits, which is 0 to 9. And then we're going to randomly choose eight of those from among all the characters. We're choosing eight of those. What this is going to return is a list. So again we want to use the join command to convert our list into a string. And you'll see there's no spaces here. This is just open quote and, and close quote. So we're joining those eight characters into a string. We print that out and here's what we get. And We can run that again if you want. And you'll see we get a random result. Pretty random mix of lowercase, uppercase, and numeric values. So that's a password generator. Pretty simple to do that using the random choices function. Now let's look at sample. Sample is just like choice, but it's without replacement. So in other words, when you take one of these items out of your list, you can't pick it a second time. So there's not going to be any duplicates. In this case, k equals 2, we're going to pick 2 out of this uh, list of six colors, uh, but we're never going to get a duplicate. So we got green and red. Now we didn't change the original list of colors. List of colors is the same. It's the same. It doesn't change. But we're not going to be able to pick a duplicate because uh, Python is keeping track of which one we picked the first time and it's not going to allow us to pick the same one in the second pick. So we'll always get two unique colors as our result from this, this uh, code here. And we can run this as many times as you want. We'll get two different colors each time. Green and pink. Yeah. So that's what sample does. It's no replacement. And we can pass in the range function as our argument for the sample function if we want. If you want a range of integers to choose unique integers across a range of values, uh, here we use range 1 to 51, which actually is going to give us a range of values from 1 to 50, because as you know the range function doesn't include the 51. Um, so 1 to 50, and we're going to choose 5 integers, and then we print that out. So we get uh, 5 unique integers between 1 and 50, with no duplicates. So that's our resulting list. Uh, next we'll look at the shuffle function. Shuffle's pretty cool. If we have a list of items that we want to mix up, we want them in mixed order. Here we'll start out with a list of numbers 1 through 8, obviously in sorted order. And we'll print out that number list. You can see 1 through 8. Uh, now one key thing to know here about the shuffle function is it's an in-place shuffle. So it doesn't return anything. It shuffles the original list. So when we print random.shuffle numbers, what do we get as a result? We get none. Why is it printing none? Because this function 
doesn't return anything. It does shuffle the numbers, but it doesn't return anything. So numbers is now shuffled, but we didn't print anything because we didn't get a return value. So actually this, we don't even need to do because it's already been executed up here. So now when we print numbers, we can see that it's shuffled. It's actually shuffled twice. It's shuffled once here and shuffled a second time here. So random.shuffle of numbers, uh, and then we print the numbers. And what we get is a shuffled list. And again, that works also with tuples and with characters in a string. So if you want to mix up the characters in a string, that too will work. And next we'll look at floating point values. We can generate random floating point values using random.random. .random. And this will give you a random floating point value between 0 and 1. 0 and 1. 0, 0 and 1.0. So the simple statement is print random.random. .random. That's it. Very simple. And then I also added a for loop here with um, five iterations. It'll print five random numbers. And you can see they're all between 0 and 1, the output here. No surprises there. Next, we have a uniform. This would give us a range. So we can use from and to arguments to print any random number within a range. And that's what uniform does. It's a uniform distribution, okay? That means an even distribution across this range of values. So we'll, here this print statement is gonna pick a random floating point value between 2.1 and 4.3. And it chose 3.8. And if we run this again, we'll probably get a different value. Yeah, 3.85 this time. Let's see if we get something different. There's 2.5. And then here we, I put it in a for loop, so it'll iterate five times, five iterations, and we'll get five different random floating point values between 9.4 and 10.7. So you can see the result there, uh, five different random floating point values. So I hope this was helpful for you. I think there's there are a lot of different applications for random numbers. You're going to use this quite frequently in a lot of different programming applications. So I think this is an important library to have a strong handle on, or at least be familiar with. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.